Right, so now we're joined by Chris Roberts, who's running for King County Elections Director. So go ahead with a two-minute introduction. Sure, thank you. Voting is the most fundamental part of our democracy. Across the nation, lawmakers are taking action that, is, that makes it more difficult for people to vote. In Washington, we are fortunate to have legislators who support the right to vote, but we can never take that right for granted. You deserve a champion who will protect your right to vote and ensure your vote is counted. I want to be your champion. I am Chris Roberts. I'm running for King County Director of Elections. I'm a member of the Shoreline City Council, and I am passionate about elections. I want your vote to count. I want your mother's vote to count. I want your son's vote to count. And I want your neighbor's vote to count. As Director of Elections, I will implement policies that will ensure ballot access for everyone. I will implement policies that will make sure that every vote is properly counted. I will implement policies that promote and prioritize voter education. I am trusted and supported by elected leaders and elected officials across the county. I would appreciate your endorsement. Thank you. Great, thank you. So now uh, feel free to turn over that piece of paper if you want to read along with us as we say these aloud. There are no gotchas in here. Um, these are two-minute answers. These are the four prepared questions that we're, um, we would be asking all candidates for elections director. And David, would you read number one? Delighted. <clears throat> this year, King County Elections moved the deadline for submitting voter packet statements to just three business days after the filing deadline, that severely limiting the amount of time for candidates to draft their statements and for organizations to make endorsements. What steps would you take to extend this deadline next year? Sure, this is a great question. Um, one of the things that's important is to, to promote, as I said, to promote voter education. And the voter's guide and voter's pamphlet is the best way to, for candidates to give the information to the voters. And it's the best information for voters about the candidates. And so if you have a filing deadline of mid-May Friday and a to submit your voter pamphlet statement just three business days afterwards, you're not giving candidates time to actually draft good statements, to get their picture in, and to actually work with the elections department to understand what exactly can happen. So this is a prior, moving this deadline back is important, and we need to make sure that we that the, what happens is that the county sends off the voters pamphlet as a subcontract to a, a third party vendor who actually produces it. <coughs> It's the county's responsibility to make sure that the um, voter pamphlet's information is correct. But this is something that we have time, that we must take time for, and the county must take additional time to actually push that voter deadline, or just voter pamphlet stating deadline back, so that candidates have time to actually do their job and uh, give their best information to the voters. Great, right. like number two. What can King County elections do to encourage voter registration? Well, there's, we, what King, the director of elections can do is actually be an advocate and go out to the schools, go out to community organizations, and encourage the voter registration. So what the director can do is go into the schools. There's age-appropriate uh, material uh, that's produced by the League of Women Voters. We can go into the schools and encourage and make it exciting for 16-year-olds to vote. Uh, we can go into community organizations and, and nonprofits and encourage them, hey, do you have voter registration materials as part in your lobby? This is something that your clients really can have and that will help sort of, hey, this is something we can do. But ultimately, the director of elections is a leader and it can work with the Secretary of State to promote laws and promote legislation that can make it more convenient for people to register to vote. So a couple things we can look at. We can look at uh, using the enhanced uh, driver's license and make that sort of as a criteria for potentially automatic voter registration since that driver's license says that you're a citizen and so we don't have to verify citizenship. We can also encourage laws to uh, uh, make it for uh, 16 year, allow 16 year olds to vote, uh, register to vote early. So these are things that they can be done but at the state level, it must be done at the state level, but it's the director of the King County election that can encourage the Secretary of State to promote laws that make it more convenient for people to vote. Great. Mary, number three. Okay, so <coughs> they're registered, and what then can King County elections do to encourage voter turnout? Well, again, we need to really promote voter registration. 
Uh, and we, some things that can be done are look maybe <coughs> for, you know, neighborhood uh, or regional sort of uh, voting centers. So instead of someone having to travel, take two to three buses and travel through two hours just to get to Renton from Union Claw uh, to cast a ballot, if they need to, to cast a secure ballot, or if they need to, uh, if they have a lost or spoiled ballot, or if they need their health reading ballot, uh, they would have to travel to Renton or to Seattle or to Bellevue to, to vote on an accessible voting unit. It's not that expensive to, if we were to actually sort of go back and have sort of regional voting centers, maybe one regional voting center sort of in each city, where people can go to if they have a lost ballot or they need help uh, in, in the election, that they can, people can go there and actually, I need help. I don't have to travel to Seattle, or I don't have to travel to or downtown Seattle, or I don't have to travel to uh, Renton. If, if we have these neighborhood regional voting centers, people can go to their community and say, I need help, and here's how you can have someone there in the election staff who can help you cast, in, cast your ballot, help you answer any questions that you might have. John, number four. As the world moves from paper to digital information, how can agencies that conduct elections ensure that voting remains anonymous, votes are counted accurately, and the public trusts the process? Well, ultimately, I believe that any election system needs to be free, fair, and accessible. It needs to be fair to candidates, and needs to be accessible to every type of voter there is. Um, so, we cannot necessarily just go to online voting because it's it can be discriminatory against uh, the elderly or people with disabilities. And it's not quite, you can't have it. And also, we have to be concerned about the integrity and security of online voting. The, the CIA and the FBI can't go to online processes. It's really hard to expect or anticipate that a county can move, can make a secure online ballot. I don't, I don't think it's possible. Um, but ultimately, what we have is we, as long as we have paper ballots, we have a track record. If someone can go in and say, you know, I'm going to, I can see what I did. I can verify the accuracy of it. And if any voter, or any citizen of the county can actually go in it, and if they want to, they can go and count the ballot and make sure that the official King County count is accurate. So that's, the, the paper ballot is uh, probably the best thing that we have and we should keep with it. The other thing is, um, I don't know how many of you here were actually affected by the Comcast outage, but, but what happens if the Comcast outage happens on election day? We, what happens then? If we go to online voting and our systems crash, what are we going to do? We run the election? So now we'll open up to follow-up questions. These are one-minute answers. So Elizabeth, then Janet. This is a follow-up to the online voting thing. If we do this, I'm very much adamant opposed to it. I mean, because the secretary, former secretary, of state, um, has been very explicit. Was an advocate of it. Was always trying to get some sort of online voting going. Um, mm -hmm. So would you oppose it, no matter what? Well, there's certainly tools that can be used. Uh, we can use the internet more and more to sort of promote voter education. Already the county allows for people to print out a ballot and mail it in. And so that is a secure way of casting it, someone casting their ballot. Um, so, but ultimately, I mean, my mother does not use a computer. So if we went to a purely an online voting system, how would she vote? Uh, someone. How would you translate it? But how would you translate it? How would you make sure that the election was secure? I mean, I got my data hacked by Primera this past uh, month. I'm a little bit scared, but I, how do we make sure that our online, our non-online voting system is is the most secure so that no one can actually hack the vote? Janet and then Evan and then David. So thank you for your answers on the voter registration and voter turnout. In terms of 
of um, increasing um, the get out the vote and voter access among communities of color, what do you think are the most significant barriers and what are the solutions and partners you would use to overcome those barriers? Specific partners. Sure. Uh, the difficult, I mean, different populations have different uh, difficulties. Uh, if you're, typically if you're young, you have, you may be moving more and more often, and so making sure your voter registration is accurate may not be a um, priority. I mean, one of the laws that was introduced this year in Olympia was a law that would uh, require landlords to provide a voter registration form as part of your uh, packet when moving in. So, I mean, that's the type of law that would encourage and improve voter uh, registration. Um, but ultimately, in terms of partnerships, you need to go into the community organizations, some of the nonprofit organizations, that provide human services and are contract for human services, that are contract providers for human services, and encourage them as part of their processes and uh, intake to say, are you registered to vote? And here's voter registration to really make sure that's meaningful. Evan, David, and Joseph. I was actually asked the same question. It's all right. David and Joseph. Uh, when were you, you said you were on the you're currently on the shoreline city? That's correct. Um, when were you first elected to council, but more importantly, uh, could you uh, share with us uh, a little bit of the life path that led you there, your educational background? Or sure. Do I get one back on this? <laughs> So I know what it's like to be a candidate and in, in, interacting with the King County Director of Elections. Uh, I moved to King County uh, in, in, 2000, in 2004 to get my PhD in political science from the University of Washington. And I've subsequently taught uh, political science classes and public policy classes at the University of Washington and in the Evans School of Public Affairs. Uh, before that, I worked in the Oregon Legislature and um, went, let's see, done a bunch of things. My first uh, involvement in politics was really the uh, 1996 Democratic Convention. I was an uh, in, uh, intern, aide, whatever, <laughs> however you might want to describe it, uh, in the media office during the 1996 California State Convention. Great. Uh, Joseph, then I have one. So this year we're running into a bit of a problem with getting our endorsements in the voter guide because there wasn't sufficient time to allow for it. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you take into account all of the, the deadlines, like getting ballots to people overseas? Um, how would you avoid that problem in the future? Well, I mean, right now, we're, the deadline for submitting it, your voter registration, your voter pamphlet information is May. Um, the voter's pamphlet will not arrive in people's doorsteps until. Um, about four weeks before the primary, three four weeks before the primary election in August, and then three to four weeks before, in, before the November election. So there is time here. Uh, the question is prioritization of the Department of Elections in terms of how how we uh, set up time. So uh, one thing about the Department of Elections is that it's not necessarily a nine to five job. People there work, uh, will work weekends, they'll work around the clock when it's necessary. Uh, and so this may be a time, and then they might have three days, so they work a weekend and have three days off. Or something like that. So this is one of the, if we have to push the deadline so that candidates have a week or so to get their voter information into the county, we can sort of ask the department employees to sort of make this a priority and potentially work sort of around the clock or work the weekend to actually get this information in. There's time, we can do it. Great, so I've got one then Clayton and then Elizabeth. Um, so I, you know, we're always wanting to make um, election systems better. 
Um, so 10 years ago, I ran a voter registration drive in Central Texas, and this was in a county that was among the better counties in Texas in terms of voter registration and the voting process, but it was still abysmal. I mean, there's so many roadblocks. The state policy was to restrict people from registering, restricting people from voting. And moving to King County, it seems like, oh, wow, this is so accessible, it's so easy, we have 80 plus percent voter registration in the city. So I wonder, uh, could you just talk about what is King County Elections doing right and what would you want to continue? Sure, King County is doing quite a few things right. One of the things that I was, uh, I'm proud of that they did is they're working on translating their website into multiple languages. Um, right now it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, translated to Chinese and I believe Vietnamese. And so I mean, that's a good thing. I mean, making sure the website's accessible so people can go and uh, find information about elections in the language that they speak at home and that they're comfortable with. Uh, Key County Elections has also been very good a lot recently in uh, accounting for every ballot. I mean, so King County has taken large, the election department has taken large strides since 2000, uh, especially since 2004, to make sure that we have the best uh, election system in the country. And it's important that we continue to make sure that King County is a model for how we should run elections throughout the country. Great. <coughs> Clayton, then last one. Um, the um, King County election was relocated to Renton following the election of Governor Greg Warren.
in the, between elected officials and the community. This uh, position is a leadership position that is not going to make policies that make it more convenient and more accessible for people to vote. It's not just an administrative position, it's being out there in the community and working with community groups, working with uh, elected officials across the county and across the state. All right, so we're about out of time. If you want to take 30 seconds for a closing statement. Sure. As I uh, mentioned earlier, I've been on the city, on the city council now for five years, and I've been endorsed by many uh, legislators from, uh, and uh, elected officials from across the county. I have uh, support, uh, elected officials supporting the Union Plot all the way to Shoreline, from Redmond all the way to uh, Federal Way. I, am going to, I want to be your champion to protect your right to vote as King Director of Elections. Great, thank you very much.